Let's face the reality. Many of us know of a project that has failed. We see evidence of this all around us. It might be a water scheme project, but the taps are still running dry because it was never complete. Or it might be a renewable energy project that's over 10 times its original budget, but it's still underway. If we look at some of the world's notorious unsuccessful projects, you may find something called the Big Dig, which is one of the largest construction schemes in the US, spanning over 20, 25 years. You may also come across the Channel Tunnel in Europe, which has completed over 80% its original budget. So what do we mean by unsuccessful projects? This could be summarized in four points. An unsuccessful a successful project needs to be completed within its intended budget. It needs to be of the right quality. It needs to be completed in time. And it needs to meet the user requirements. In fact, research shows that over 65% of projects completed worldwide are unsuccessful. If we reverse this, it means that just under 35% of projects undertaken worldwide are successful. Climate action projects will be some of the most ambitious projects undertaken worldwide. But then there's a high risk of failure, there's a high risk of us not meeting our commitments because research has shown us that the world is persistently bad at implementing projects. So, imagine the scenario where Africa only achieves under 35% of the climate action targets. What will the future of the continent be like? There are many reasons that projects fail. There are many reasons that projects are unsuccessful. But one of the critical actions to mitigate against failure or minimize the likelihood of failure is by mobilizing suitably qualified project professionals. It's therefore important in Africa's fight against climate change to scale up the number of project professionals to run these projects, the number of professionals to lead these ambitious initiatives, these bright ideas that we have. Africa will not meet its climate change objectives if it fails to do so. So I've been working on projects for over 10 years now, and I have witnessed both successful and unsuccessful projects. When I think of a time when I took on an ambitious project in high school, I was always fascinated with building things with my hands. And so I took on an ambitious project of building a model cement house. Don't ask me why I was playing with cement, but I was fascinated with creating something. So I realized that some of the lessons I learned about projects and delivering and building back then are similar to some of the lessons I've learned as a project professional. In developing this project of mine, or building this model house, I first had to plan it on paper. And then I also had to find my team, so I recruited my siblings to help me, against their will. I also realized I needed to find material. What will I build this with? And I had to source cardboard boxes around the house, um, paper, wooden sticks, and so forth. And so I was ready to build my prototype. As I started with my project, somebody suggested I add an additional room. And so I did, made it bigger. They also added that I powered it up with electricity. And I thought, that's a brilliant idea. And I did that as well. Ultimately, I realized that this was taking me a lot longer than I had planned. I ran out of material. I also did not have any budget or any money to finish it. And so I was unsuccessful. You may wonder why I've taken you through this long walk down memory lane. But this scenario really emphasizes the many ways that a project can go wrong. The fact that I entertained all these changes, I deviated from my plan. I also didn't apply any change management processes. 
the team that was doing this as well was unfortunately not competent to do so. So, these are the lessons that we can learn about how to implement projects better in the context of, of climate change. All of these things can be solved by applying fundamental project management principles to projects. And this will certainly benefit our climate action projects. On the upside, when projects are successful, there's a huge sense of relief and it's rewarding to see the finished product. So I use the lessons from my first unsuccessful project in building my second model prototype. And I felt a huge sense of relief. I was overjoyed. And the beauty of it is it has stood the test of time. And this is the story I hope we get to tell of Africa's climate action projects. I conducted research to really get an understanding on what are some of the gaps in Africa's implementation capacity, especially pertaining to project professionals. And why do these gaps persist and where are the risk areas? Based on a survey completed by project professionals, this includes project managers, project engineers, and project planners, over 90% of respondents stated that Project professionals are critical in climate action. There's no doubt about it. Over 70% of respondents believe that Africa does not have sufficient project professionals to meet its climate action targets. They also said that this puts the continent at risk as a result. Over 90% of respondents said the continent is not doing nearly enough to upskill the next generation of project leaders to run with these projects, these bright ideas that we have. It's therefore evident that part of the conversation around climate action and climate change also needs to include an understanding on the resource gaps in this area and how these are to be alleviated. You know, some of the gaps exist as well because there's been a lack of focus in technical project management skills. There's no value placed on accreditation. We know that often those leading high value, high impact projects lack the necessary capacity to do so. Project professionals that have an understanding of climate action and sustainability are also scarce to come by. So it's evident that in order for Africa to really understand, to really achieve its missions. This is an area that remains a blind spot. To further add to this, in the next coming years, Africa will compete globally for project professional skills due to a growing demand. It's estimated that over the next few years, project professionals will handle over 25 trillion US dollars in projects. Imagine if a significant portion of this is allocated to Africa and we lack the execution capability. It's also estimated that by the year 2030, the world will need over 25 million project professionals. That's a whole country of project professionals. And that's, that's almost half of South Africa's population. You may wonder why I've stood here today painting this gloomy picture, but I will leave you with a few action steps. We need to accept that project management skills are fundamental and they're important for everyone. Our areas of interventions need to look at the entire pipeline, including at basic education level, in terms of what we educate or how we educate our kids. We start instilling project management skills in the little tasks that they do, similar to the task that I took on in building a model house. At higher education level, we need to include this as additional coursework. There needs to be emphasis on project management, climate change, um, and sustainability. At the workplace level, there needs to be a concerted effort and upskilling and a culture of continuously developing because all of these things are emerging trends and they're new for all of us. So there needs to be a commitment at that level. At industrial institutional level, 
They need to be suitably qualified and accredited people that are running these projects that are, that are of impact, these projects that we cannot afford to get right. This will turn the tide. In closing, so projects linked to climate action will be some of the most ambitious financial undertakings of our generation, requiring mass mobilization of resources. Africa's climate action commitments will be implemented through projects. And these projects need to be led by suitably qualified project leaders. And it's through these actions that Africa will emerge victorious and prosperous in its fight against climate change.